Guys, today we're going to be talking about center locks on street vehicles, and honestly, they're kind of dumb. All right, so Micah, race technology, that's what center locks are, right? Why would you think that they're dumb? Well, this is another case of where race technology has not been brought straight from the track. It's been adapted a little bit to fit road cars. Now, let's first of all talk about what the benefits of a center lock are. So what are the benefits of a center lock or the one single lug nut in the middle of the wheel? Well, the biggest advantage for a race team is how quick it is to remove the wheel from the car. You just have one nut that has to be zipped off and one nut that you zip back on. So it's a lot faster. Another benefit of that single lug nut is that you're able to place it at the center of a wheel, um, which lowers the amount of mass further from the center of the wheel. Instead of having to have the wheel thick enough to support multiple lug nuts around the center, it's one lug nut in, in the very center. So think about like a ice dancer, an ice skater in the Olympics. When they hold their arms out, they spin slower. When they pull their arms in, they spin a lot faster because it takes a lot less energy to rotate mass when it's closer to the center. That's another big benefit of center lock. The last benefit that we're seeing on street cars is that they are harder to steal the wheels. You have to have a very large wrench to remove it and in the case of the front wheels they'll actually spin the front wheels trying to remove the center lock so you need to have access to the inside of the car for someone to hold the brake down in that case yeah the center lock does perform that function right now it's very difficult to steal a wheel that has a center lock on it but in the race with this center nut uh, being forcing the wheel on there is a scary safety drawback to the center lock because the wheel is being held on by this nut when you apply braking force then the road is transmitting a force through the wheel to the hub and so let's say on the passenger side of the car when you brake hard it actually starts to unwind typical right hand threaded screw because the wheel is actually like acting like the ratchet. It's applying a force to that center nut. So for this reason on race cars, the center locks or the center nuts on the passenger side are actually left hand thread so that you spin them left to tighten them. And the ones on the driver's side are right hand thread. You spin them right to tighten them. That way when the car is going under extreme braking loads, both sides are actually applying a tightening force on the center lock so they don't come off. Now on the street versions, there is a center pin that locks them in place and it's kind of frustrating when you put the center lock to its final torque, the pin doesn't always pop out and engage the center lock so you have to kind of jiggle it. It's really frustrating, it's not fast. Uh, you can't use an impact with the center locks that are on Lamborghinis or Porsches. So they're really just for show and to make the wheels harder to steal. Okay, so, what are we talking about today in today's video? Well, today we're gonna to be talking about the clicking noise that the dealer says is a normal sound for center lock. Uh, this is not a normal sound. And if you hear clicking when you're driving or especially under heavy load turning, then that means something is moving and that should not be happening with your wheels or center lock. What the problem is coming from is from the anti-seize that's being applied to the threads of the center lock. So the center lock nut is aluminum, but the hub that it screws onto is steel. Whenever you tighten two metals that are not the same together, then galvanic corrosion happens. When that happens, it causes things to kind of seize into place. And if you don't put anti-seize on them, then they can get stuck. That's why maybe you've seen you know, BMWs that have aluminum wheels get stuck to the hub and you have your technician banging on them with a dead blow hammer. I didn't touch nothing. Trying to get them loose from the hub because of this galvanic corrosion. So you have to put some anti-seize on the threads. The problem with anti-seize is that it comes in a tub like this with a big goopy brush. Technicians are not very careful when they're applying this to the thread. What you should do is wipe the majority of the excess off and then just barely brush this onto a threaded area. If you put too much of it on, then what happens is as the center lock starts to tighten down, it pushes that grease up into the center lock nut. Now that center lock nut 
it presses hard into this into the wheel and it presses hard up against the hub and as it starts to tighten it actually kind of seals it and that grease gets jammed back into the back of it and it has nowhere to go now grease is a liquid so it is you know not compressible or virtually uncompressible so then when you go to torque down that 600 newton meters that the center lock requires you do get 600 newton meters of torque however the wheel is not sitting flush on the hub it's sitting up against that grease and so there's a little bit of a gap between it and the hub now this is fine when you're driving in a straight line but once you start to load the tire laterally, the road then begins pushing left to right on that tire. And as it rotates, it'll push hard left, and then that grease will move to the bottom of the wheel, and the top of the wheel will pop against the hub. Then as it rotates a little bit more, more force on that wheel causes it to wanna go out and again pop. And that causes the grease to move in a circular pattern around the hub and the wheel will just be popping constantly this way or if you're turning the other way popping constantly that way and this popping back and forth is a very severe stress on the hub and the center lock and i'm going to show you here what it's caused on my client's hub due to way too much grease it causes constant vibration which has caused the hub to crack all the way around little micro cracks and wear away material that is not safe so what the solution is is to disassemble them clean them and apply the right amount of grease which is just a very very tiny amount of grease so to take them apart here's what you do get those away you can look around and if you actually look at the back of this there is one part that's not connected right here you see you can even see right here it's not connected see it pressing boop, boop, boop. So you're gonna take a little screwdriver and you're gonna pry it into one side of that thing. And there's a little lip down there that'll start to pry up like that, you see that? Because we wanna make it a big enough gap to get a big old honking screwdriver in there. Now we can just pry up on this. Stop! See that there? And then just kind of, once it's in there, just kind of twist a little bit and it's gonna help lift this thing up. And then you just kind of work it. Work it up, 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 come away. And it'll actually get to a point where it will stop going back down. See, like this. And then you can just kind of go the rest of the way around here and it'll pop right out of there. Look at that. And then look at that. That's too much grease. You're gonna need to take that, take the washer out. Look at how much grease that is. That, and that just can't come out. Here's the ring that holds it in. You'll need to put all that back together. Look at that. Look at how black that is back there. I mean, the only way for it to get black is for debris or dirt to come into it. And again, how does that happen? How does it get that black? Well, really what's happening is the wheel and the wheel lock are just bouncing around and causing problems. So make sure you do what I say and grease these the right way. We're gonna clean this, clean this, clean all the grease off. Clean all this grease out. Clean out these little holes. Look at that, it's fucking stupid. This is how much grease should be on the entire back of that. Just that, that's it. This is pretty clean now. You see we've dug out all those. And now the right amount of anti-seize to use, I'm gonna show you, okay? This is gonna be really easy. I'm just gonna take this right here. We're just gonna get this an, a little bit of a coat so that it's got grease on it so that it's gonna be able to slide and not seize, but it doesn't need to have any bulk on it. It's just literally that much. Okay, great. Now it can, it's not going to have a problem. And we're just going to, again, wipe the back of this with some anti-seize. There should not be buildup on it. Same with the middle. You know, this sliding surface, honestly, even that's too much. We'll just clean that off. Now to get the ring back on here. Put that back on here like this. Push it down. And that should be good. It should not want to come out again. It should be locked in there now. Yeah. There we go. Locked in there. It's not going to come out. He went to Lamborghini for his two year service and they removed all four wheels to do a brake fluid flush. And that is when the clicking started. And he brought it back saying, hey, this clicking started. They told him carbon ceramic brake noise. That's normal. He left. 
it was getting worse. He came back again. They told him, oh, well, you need uh, wheel bearings and axles in the front. So he spent $15,000 and replaced the front wheel bearings and front axles. And because the hubs are pressed into the wheel bearings, he actually replaced the front hubs. And when they did this, enough of the grease had come off that it stopped clicking in the front. But then as he continued to drive, he could still hear some clicking and he br came back a third time and they said, well, this is center locks and this is normal for center locks. They're going to make that clicking noise. And that is not normal. They said in the invoice that the techs per Lamborghini spec added grease to the center locks and retorqued them and sent them on his way, which is exactly the opposite of what it needed. So I'm going to show you here how to disassemble them, clean it all out, and then just barely apply the right amount of threads, torque them down, and then make sure that center pin is popped out fully and flush with the center lock nut and the noise will go away.